Hello and welcome to this Mastership Excel R24 software demo. My name is Gijs van Beek. I work as a software developer at Mastership and I also hold a degree in maritime engineering. We are specialists in CAD and CAM software uh, and also the engineering of constructions. We deliver software to shipbuilding companies to make their engineering and production process as efficient as possible. Next to delivering software, we also do uh, engineering projects for clients. So we make software, but we also uh, use our own software. So if you're interested in our uh, engineering projects, then you can visit our website. Um, so it's mastership.nl. And here you see some recent cases that we did. So you see uh, small motor yachts, but also super yachts and some work vessels. It's a diverse portfolio that we have. And um, yeah, this, this demo is about software. So in this video, I will give you a introduction about our software and what it can do for your company. And in the following videos, I will um, explain all the functionalities that Mastership has to offer. So uh, before we start, I would like to mention that if you have any software related questions, then you can send an email to gb at mastership.nl, uh, which is my email address. Uh, and if you have any sales or general related questions, um, then you can send an email to info at mastership.nl. Okay, so what can our software do for your company? Well, it can help you to translate this 3D model, surface model, or a lines plan uh, into this. And this is a 3D model of the construction. So when you have modeled the 3D uh, uh, model of the construction, and then you can also add production information to it. And this production information really makes it valuable. So you can add uh, for example, marking lines, bending lines, treatment information, logistics information, all or a, a unique plate ID all to one part that you have drawn. Um, and this combines, so the, the, the 3D model and the production information combined, uh, you can send that to a cutting machine. And when it's cutted, then yeah, you have in fact a building kit, which makes your production uh, process a lot more efficient. Uh, and next to that, we can deliver you uh, some purchase lists of plates and profiles, um, management reports, also classification drawings, arrangement drawings, and finally workshop drawings. Um, and how do we do that? Well, our software is for a major part based on TOM. And TOM stands for Template Oriented Modeling. And that is, well, in fact, a big library of templates of common construction elements. Uh, so like brackets, stiffeners, uh, floors, but also uh, welding holes and cutouts. Um, those are all in the library. And with that, a engineer can design really quickly, uh, but also it reduces the amount of mistakes that an engineer can make. And then I would say the biggest advantage of Mastership is that it's uh, made by shipbuilders. So I think that about 90% of the employees that work at Mastership are either from uh, the industry or uh, hold a degree in engineering or maritime engineering. So we know which information is relevant to the drawing office and which, uh, which information is relevant to the workshop floor. Um, and then our software is fully compliant with the engineering process and the iterative uh, character that um, the design process has. So it can easily adapt to design changes. Uh, and finally, it's based on AutoCAD. So everybody knows AutoCAD. So therefore, our software is easy to learn. I think within a week, uh, you will know the basics of Mastership. And within a month, uh, you will be an intermediate user. Um, so our software is, uh, consists of four modules. 
namely a shape module, the parts module, NC module, and the organizer. Um, in the shape module, you can make uh, shell expansions and hull plate expansions, uh, which you can use for uh, classification. And then we have the parts module in which you make the 3D construction model. And um, that's also the largest module that we have. And then the NC module to generate cutting code and nested plate parts. And finally, the organizer for purchase lists and management reports. Each module can be licensed uh, individually, um, though we recommend to license the complete package um, to provide yourself with um, the best solution. Uh, next to that, we also have a few software extensions, maybe the workshop assistant and also the model exchanger. The workshop assistant is in fact a big screen uh, in the middle of your workshop or, or drawing office uh, with the 3D model on it. Um, and it helps you, can help you for internal communication and or a major part eliminates the need for conventional construction drawings. Uh, it's very often used by our clients. Um, and then the model exchanger can be used for sharing your model with uh, subcontractors, or contractors or, um, or clients. So this was the introduction uh, to our uh, software. Um, again, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask them. Um, in the next videos, uh, I will explain how the software looks and how it works. Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, watching this introduction and then I hope to see you in the next videos. In this video, I will show you uh, how much ship looks, uh, what we are going to do in the coming videos and um, how to set up a mastership project. So when you open mastership, you see this, uh, you have, we have five ribbons. Um, here, this is the mastership ribbon and it has some general functionalities in it. Uh, here you have the shape ribbon with some tools used for shape, like making hull expansions. You have the parts ribbon and the, all those functionalities are commonly used for uh, making plate parts, construction elements, um, but also stiffeners, face plates, um, and also markings. Uh, then we have an NC tab, uh, which is used for making plate nestings and generating a numer numerical cutting code. Uh, then we have finally the add-ins. So here you see one add-in for the workshop assistant. And here you see an add-in for the ship converter or master ship model exchanger. Okay, so what we are going to do in this demo, we are going to make uh, a construction that looks like this from the foreship of, uh, of a ship. Um, it's an imaginary construction that, um, that I made myself. Um, it's not complete, it's not, uh, fine. it's not the final version yet, but it covers all the elements that a master ship has to offer. Um, so let's take a look at the complete model. Uh, this is uh, the model that we are going to use. It's um, I think an 80 meter long uh, explorer vessel with a beam of 18 meters and a depth of uh, eight meters. Uh, and yeah, as I said, we are going to make a hull structure. Uh, then we could also make a structure for the superstructure. That doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, we are only going to look at the hull. So this is the model and it's just a surface model. So there's no construction in it yet. And the first thing to do is when you set up a project, you define all the frame positions, uh, the deck positions and the longitudinal positions. Uh, and when you do that, then the software will make slices uh, at each position through this model. Um, so you can do that here at the assembly manager. Now you can go to frames and here you see all the 
frame positions that I defined. Um, you can also add uh, positions or adjust frame positions. Here are the longitudinals, the horizontals, and non-orthogonal positions. And when you've done that, then you will get an assembly. And this assembly looks like this. Um, so this is an assembly with all uh, empty drawings in it. Um, but those are all the slices. So here is frame, uh, let's see, this is frame 58. And we have here, we have uh, the side girder two. And so that's how it works. So you can open a frame drawing. And um, yeah, then you see some stifflers here and the stringers and the deck. Um, and then you can start drawing your construction here uh, and then you save it. And when you save it, then you will see it appearing here in the assembly. Um, so those are just orthogonal positions, uh, but sometimes it's also nice uh, to have non-orthogonal frames. So for example, here at the bow, you might want to have uh, a frame in this direction and also in, for example, uh, yeah, maybe slightly different direction. So you can make, um, yeah, all those positions at the bow as well. So here at the midship uh, and all, it's of course fine to have orthogonal positions, but sometimes you also want them non-orthogonal. So that's possible. Um, yeah, this is how to set up a project. Um, this is really your starting point of using Mastership. So uh, in the coming videos, we will look at uh, shell expansions since that's also in the basic design phase. Uh, and there we can uh, define uh, where our primary and secondary construction elements will be and also the butts and the seams arrangement so that's in the next video and uh thank you for watching this introduction and i hope to see you in the next video in this video i will explain how to make shell expansions of uh of your 3d model and also uh, how you can add uh, primary or secondary construction elements to it in the last video we started with uh, defining uh, the assembly uh, which is the starting point of your mastership project. And for this, for this project, we used uh, this surface model as an input. So in the basic uh, the, yeah, earlier design phases of um, the engineering process, you might would like to uh, make a shell expansion. And if you're going to make a shell expansion, you usually start off with only one side of the model. So we did, um, and here uh, of this model, we can make the shell expansion. So if we are in the shape ribbon, then we have a functionality here to make the actual expansion. So, and what this functionality does, it uh, generates uh, ordinates on the 3D hull surface model. And after that, it creates the 2D ordinates of that. So we have another video on how this exactly works, um, but here I'm just going to show you the end result. So first it makes the 3D ordinates, and then it will also generate the 2D ordinates, which is in fact already your expansion. And to give it a bit more meaning, I added some, um, uh, some lines to it. So here you see the contours and also the construction water line and the decks. So now it really starts to take a bit of shape. I also added um, the bulkheads and the girders. And what you see now is that we have in the shell expansion, I made the bulkheads. They are not in the 3D model and uh, here in the 3D model, you see the side girders, which are not in the shell expansion. So what we can do is well, that we select uh, those 3D lines. 
and then simply project them to the shell expansion. And we can also uh, really do it the other way around. So we can select our bulkheads. And then project those to the 3D model. So you can do this for any line types. Uh, you can do it for uh, maybe for stiffeners or maybe for uh, the butts and the seams. Um, so yeah, this is an uh, easy and convenient way to make the shell expansion. And that gives you a general overview of all your construction elements. Uh, but it can also be used for, uh, for example, classification drawings. So those lines, all those 3D lines, are generated just using uh, regular AutoCAD tools. Uh, those are in fact just uh, projections on the shell surface. And those 2D lines, so I already made the, the bill cats. Those are just 2D AutoCAD lines. So that's nothing special, but only the mastership tools allow you to make it into a 2D representation or a 3D representation. So that was it on how to make a shell expansion. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how to make uh, hull plate expansions of uh, those hulls or, or of those plates here at the bow section. So thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. In this video, I will show you how to make hull plate expansions. As we have seen in the last video, uh, we could transfer the lines from the 3D model to the shell expansion drawing. And that's actually the first thing we are going to do uh, before we make the actual hill expansion. So I'm going to turn off a few layers to make it a bit more clear. Here. So I will select all the seams. They are now projected on the shell expansion. And I will do the same for all the butts. And now we have the arrangement of seams and butts in the shell expansion. So now we can take a look and see if we are happy with it. I am. Uh, but if you're not, then you can, for example, adjust this seam. Uh, maybe yeah, give it a slightly different shape and then translate it back to the 3D model. Okay, so to make the actual expansion, you can go to the parts ribbon and here you have some functionalities to make a double curved expansion or a single curved expansion. Well, here at the bow, we usually have complex shapes. Uh, so we go for a double curved expansion. I'll select the lower seam. The upper seam, I select the off butt. I also select the forward butt. I give it a identification, maybe P3, for example. And I'm going to mark all the frame lines on it. So this is one frame line. Do this a bit quicker. I press enter. And it asks me, do I want to add access material so that you can trim it on the hull itself? Uh, we can say yes or no. Uh, some of our clients say, well, no, please don't do so. They are just perfect. Uh, so uh, we do no. Now the lofting points are being made, we accept them and the plate is generated. So we can give it a unique identification, B31 uh, for example. We can assign it a material steel, in this case that's fine. We can assign it a thickness of 10 millimeters uh, and we can also uh, give it a certain form of treatment. 
Uh, and finally, we can assign it a prediction unit. So all this information is saved in the database and then will show up later in management reports. I will go into more detail in the next videos about how to create a part. So now the part is generated. It is here. And what you see is um, the marking lines on it, so the frames. And you also see here um, uh, whether the direction is up and which direction is forward. So in that way, you can not really make mistakes. You can see the unique identification number, the thickness, and also the prediction unit where it belongs to. And you can also see here a C, here a D, a B, and an A on the corners. And you can find them back here at the 3D model. So a bit hard to see maybe. So here you see the A, B, D, and C. So that's how to make uh, the hull plate expansion. Um, in this case, it was not really curved, but still. And to actually produce this plate, uh, it might be convenient to make some molds for it. So if we go to the NC ribbon, then you see here plates, mold set, and to make actual molds of it. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to make plate molds. Um, and I made a few lines here and those indicate where the molds will be. So I just made those lines using an AutoCAD projection on the hull surface, nothing special. I select the curves that I need for my, uh, for my molds. So maybe select those lines. Oh. Mistake. Select them again. And now the molds are being made. I see that two of the surfaces are not uh, shown properly, but I'll show you in a bit that it, that, that probably is not an issue. Um, so our, they are now on the inside of the hull. And in this case, that's good to have since that's easier to shape than when you have the molds on the outside of the hill. But maybe on, for example, here, it might be convenient to have the molds actually on the outside of the hill. In this case, we have them on the inside. So do we want to reverse the direction? No. And we can go give the molds a height. Well, maybe do 300. So now the molds are created. And if you select them, uh, then you see, uh, and then you can see the mold set. As I already said, this surface is not drawn correctly, but the outline is. So that's fine in this case. Um, so now we have the molds and uh, we can use this uh, on the production floor. Um, so the final step is to make um, actual molds of it. So uh, I'll give this in search port, I give it a name, uh, P31M uh, for molds, and we make it out of wood. We give it a thickness of maybe, uh, I don't know, 12 millimeters, and the section is uh, P2. So now the molds are generated. And uh, what you see is all the molds. So this is the identification number. This is the first mold. This is the second mold, the third, etc. And what you see is that those have a small notch in here so that you can actually connect um, the molds and that they are at exactly uh, the right place. And then you can send those uh, plates to a cutting machine and then the molds will be cut. So that, that uh, was the final step of making hull plate expansions. 
and how to make molds. So uh, thank you for watching this video. And in the next video, we are going to make actual construction elements. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can make uh, plate elements, so plate construction elements um, using template oriented modeling. And uh, I'm also going to show you how to make stiffeners using Tom. So in the last videos, we defined the assembly, uh, which was empty. And we also have seen the shell expansions. So in the meantime, I uh, advanced a bit throughout the project. Uh, and I now have a assembly with uh, some construction in it. So here you see the complete overview with here the, the shell expansion drawing. And you see the arrangement of here. You see, you see a few seams in the butts and you see the water line and the deck line. And you see here um, the construction, uh, which is partly finished. Uh, it has three web frames now. Um, but by the end of this video, um, we would like to have six web frames. So uh, this web frame, 44, or uh, frame 44, we are going to uh, complete this in this video. And in the next videos, we will copy it from frame 44 to frame 56 and also to frame 60. Um, and I see that also a stiffener is missing here, so we can do that as well. But first, uh, we are going to finalize frame 44 and we are going to make it similar to the other frames. So um, I open this reference. And what you see here is a um, frame which is almost complete. So we have here a pillar with a faceplate on it. Um, a part of a web frame, uh, a foundation, and here a floor. We're going to make a bracket here using Tom. And we're going to make a deck beam here with holes in it and with stiffeners on it. Um, so let's start by making uh, a bracket. So we go to the parts ribbon. We select parametric part. And then this menu opens. So we select brackets, and in this case, we go for bracket four. And here you can fill in uh, the parameter, parameters that you need. So, and here in this image, you see the variables that apply. So you see, for example, radius, and then I have set the radius to zero. And here, a cutout radius for a welding hole. Uh, I've set that here to variable R weld hole. Um, so you can click also on load set and then you can say, well, um, I have a few predefined, um, dimensions here. So this is, for example, a bracket that I use for stiffeners and click okay. And then I have different dimensions. Uh, so you can define those yourself. Uh, but in this case, we go for the, this bracket and we click okay. Then we select our baseline, which is this one. And we select our reference line, which is this one. And we choose the side. So now the part is being created. You already see the contour here. And what you also see is the type of material. So you see this is steel. Um, well, you can choose aluminium, wood, um, and you can give it a thickness. So in this case, it's eight millimeters, which is fine for now. You can just give it any number you like. We go for eight. Um, it has a projection unit, or you can assign it a projection unit. Uh, it is now assigned to projection 1A, since the rest of this frame is also in 1A. But you can change this. So you can also say, no, I want to have it in 1B. Uh, or you can make a new projection unit. So you say, I have one C, for example, and that is a section of the four peak 
and it's child of ship, so the complete assembly. You say, okay, and you select it. So, and now this bracket is in production unit 1C. And uh, finally, it has a unique identification number. So in this case, it's A44J. Um, and um, this A means it's from the ship and 44 says it's frame 44 and J is um, the unique letter within this frame. Uh, so when you press OK, uh, then the part is being created and also saved in the database. So all that information about the production unit, the thickness and um, the, ID, uh, the identification number, that's all saved in the database. What you can also do, if I go back to the part, then you can also assign it uh, some um, a production information like uh, bend. Uh, of course, you are not going to bend a bracket, but uh, you can bend it and you say 30. So then that information is also saved in the database and it will show up in management reports. And um, yeah, so you have a few fields that you can adjust. I'll delete it. It's not uh, really relevant for a bracket. But now this part is created and uh, what you see, it has a small offset here or uh, a bit of space between the floor and the bracket since the tank top will be here. And same goes for uh, here. So there's a bit of space since there will be a longitudinal plate uh, on that position. Um, okay, so we've done that. Uh, now we can make also uh, a deck beam. And the bracket, we created it using a standard template. But the deck beam, uh, we do not have a template for it. This, or uh, since that is uh, not always the same shape. So we go for a bounded panel and with the bounded panel, you can make uh, a plate part or a construction element of any uh, shape that you like. So we click the bounded panel and uh, then I select the entities that I like. And I press enter. And now, uh, again, my uh, deck beam is created. I will assign it production unit 1A. So is the rest. And now it's made. Then I can add holes in it. So I can press add detail. And I go to the main. And I can do cutouts. For example, and then you see again a library with templates uh, for cutouts. So this here, cutout six, is a uh, template for welding holes. Um, you see here other holes or uh, holes that follow contours. In this case, we go for multiple two. And uh, we define uh, our circle diameter is 400. I already did it, so 400. I want to have them uh, equally spaced, but at least 200 millimeters, and I want to have 10 holes. So I press OK. And then I select uh, the contours. So I select this contour, I select this contour, I select stringer one and stringer two. So, and now the holes uh, are being generated. So here you see 10 evenly spaced out holes. So that's done. Uh, and we can do something similar for this web frame, since you see here the longitudinal stiffeners. And they have to go through this uh, web frame. So we do it then again, add detail. We select this part. And we go for extrusions. So here you see all different kind of extrusions. Uh, and in this case, we go for extrusion three. I already have defined a set of parameters. 
I click OK. I select the contour and I select the extrusions or the, the profiles for which I want to make a cutout. Then I press enter and the cutouts are made. So if I zoom into this now, you see here the profile and the cutout around it. So we could also do uh, a welding hole here, for example, uh, but we leave that for now. Um, so this is uh, Tom in a nutshell. So we use templates for the cutouts and uh, also for creating a bracket. Where we can use Tom for uh, defining stiffeners as well. So on this deck beam, we want to have stiffeners uh, in between the holes. Um, and we are going to do just that. So we go for parametric stiffener. And I select this baseline. And I want to make a bounded curve here. And also on the top. So now the stringer will be exactly on this deck beam. And I attach this stiffener to this part. So what you see now is um, again the uh, unique identification number. Uh, you also see uh, the type of stiffener that you want. So you can choose a flat bar or L profile, a pipe, T profile. Um, in this case, we can go for the build profile made out of steel and we can yeah, choose any size you like. Uh, in this case, we go for a smaller one. It is attached to this part, which is the deck beam. Uh, that doesn't really influence the 3D model, uh, though it is registered in the database, so you will, so you can see it in your reports. Uh, we can also give it a bit of over length if needed. So if you need, for example, bend the stiffener, then a bit of over length can be helpful. Um, and we can also give it a start and an end gap, so like an offset. Okay, I'm happy, so I create it. So the stiffener is now created. We can take a look at it. What we see here is um, that it has a bit of end detail to it. So you see that this edge is uh, cut on both the top and uh, the bottom. Uh, that was not uh, <laughs> not not uh, intended actually, uh, since this is this is weird to do for a deck beam. Uh, but you also see that it starts and ends at the top and the bottom of the deck beam. Um, that also might not be desirable. So what we can do is we can edit the stiffener, and we can give it a start and uh, end cap. So we say start cap of 50 and also an end cap of 50. If you click OK now, then you see, OK, the stiffener has become shorter and also the details are removed. Uh, so that's already better. And then we can give it a start detail. And we also have a library for this. So um, you can choose start detail with a welding hole in it or a uh, angled cut or yeah. A lot of different end details. So in this case, it maybe makes sense to go for this detail. We give it a height of um, 40 and a, a cut angle of 45. So we do the same for the 
uh, the other side, Let's make this 40 and 45. And we do OK. And now you see that the stiffener is adjusted accordingly. So that was it for this video. Uh, we have seen how to create plate parts and stiffeners using TOM. Um, and we've also seen how to create plate parts uh, using a bounded panel. So in the next video, I will show you how to intelligently copy this stiffener to the other stiffeners or to the other positions. Uh, we are going to copy this frame to the starboard side or to the, yeah, to the starboard side. Uh, and we are then going to copy this entire frame uh, to frame 56 and frame 60. So thank you for watching this video on creating construction elements. And I hope to see you in the next video. In this video, I will show you how you can make use of our intelligent copy function. So this copy function enables an engineer to rapidly make a model, but also to prevent uh, potential mistakes. So we'll start where the last video ended. Um, we created uh, this uh, stiffener on the deck beam, and um, we are first going to copy this stiffener to uh, these positions. So once we have this stiffener created, we can now do copy and we select the stiffener and also the deck beam so that we know that so that the software knows that uh, the other lines or the other stiffeners also should be attached to this deck beam and then we select those lines and the stiffeners are created so if you look at this then you see that it's maybe not that straightforward since this deck beam is curved and all those stiffeners really follow the curve of that deck beam. So in fact, this is also template oriented modeling, uh, but then you made your own template since you made this stiffener uh, and you copied it to the other uh, positions. So if you now want to change, for example, uh, the shape of this stiffener, then you simply uh, redo this stiffener or you edit it and then you uh, copy it again to the other stiffener. Um, so what else can we do? We can uh, also mirror uh, this uh, star or this uh, port side to the starboard side. So we're going to do that. We click mirror in center line and we select all the entities. So now all the parts are mirrored in the center line. Um, so you can also do just one entity, but for this demo, we did demo. Um, okay, what you see is if you zoom in, then uh, for example here, uh, on the stiffener, the starboard side is PHF 44B, and on the uh, or in the, this is the port side. This is the starboard side. Uh, it has the same identification, but then with an S appended to it from starboard. So, and that goes for all the all the parts in the drawing. Um, so the the relations maintain uh, and. I can show you by, for example, moving this bracket. Yeah. And I move this up. And so will the other side will also move. I can undo this now. Um, so that's one way to uh, quickly model. Um, and what you can also do is copy the entire frame. Uh, to frame, uh, yeah, to other frames. So if you go to the assembly, and it first will say, hey, uh, frame 44 is changed. Uh, you cannot see this. 
let me drag this up. So if you look, then it says reload frame 44. So we will do that. So now frame 44 is loaded into the assembly. And we are going to copy frame 44. So this entire frame, we are going to copy it to frame 56. Is this, yeah, I think this is 56. And to frame, um, also to frame 60, which is here. And that's not really straightforward since uh, frame 44 here is almost uh, box shaped, but uh, frame 56 and frame 60 are, yeah, really have a different shape. So there we go. We go to ship copy and we simply select all the entities. Uh, you can also do just one entity. But, And then we click clear, browse. We select the frames, so frame 40. Oh no, it was frame 56 and frame 60. And we press OK. Okay, so the copying is done. And you see here a small dialog and it says that all the parts are copied successfully. So we can go to frame 56. And uh, if we have a look at it, indeed, everything is copied successfully. So here at the floor, you see that the cutouts are copied as well. Um, here at the web frame, you see uh, the cutouts are not copied. That is because there are no longitudinal stiffeners in that position. And uh, for frame uh, 60 is the same. So you see here the cutouts and here no cutouts. Uh, what you see is that in frame 56, there were two holes in this uh, foundation. But in frame 60, there's only one hole. Since the difference was too big. Uh, and there, it was not able to make a hole here, and that seems to be fine as well. So we've saved this drawing, frame 60 and frame 56. And we can go back to the assembly. I will reload the frames. And now we have a complete construction. So this was uh, the video about uh, rapidly modeling. Um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video, uh, which is about adding production information. In this video, I will explain how you can add and extract production information from the 3D construction model. Um, we have already seen how you can add a uh, unique ID to uh, construction elements and to assign a production unit to it or certain treatments. But in this video, I'm also going to explain how you can add, uh, for example, marking lines and marking texts. Uh, show you stiffener plots and um, I'm also going to show you how you can uh, add uh, baffling or weld compensation. So if we take a look at frame 44 again or no let's do uh, another frame this time let's do frame 48 and open it. And we see this frame. Uh, 
and we can now for example to this floor we can maybe make a marking of the two side girders that are on there so what we do we do we do add markings to this plate and we select those lines and now they are marked so you see two green lines here two green lines uh, which means they will be uh, printed on the plate before it will be cut so and then we can also mark a text and then we say side girder 4000 there and we do the same for this side girder 7000 and we also do it on this side so now someone on the shop floor knows okay the side girders need to be here and here and there cannot really be made mistakes on that so you can do this for uh, for stiffeners as well so you can do mark stiffeners and then you select this deck beam and then you select the stiffeners now all the markings are applied if we uh, remove the solids so then you can see here uh, yeah those green lines and you see okay those uh, this stiffener phf 48 ec um needs to be here and there and there and etc etc and it's also marked on the other side since those are mirrored so the link is maintained and same goes for the side girders here you see the marking uh, so that's how to mark uh, stiffeners and plate parts but you can also do the same uh, if you have for example a strip and it needs to be uh, bent at an angle of 30 then you draw a strip draw a marking line on it and then you add a text okay bent at 30 degrees for example so what you also can do is is mark a grid and for that i will open the tank top so i open this assembly again and then i go to the tank top and to this tank top i applied a uh, mark grid so this is just one part and i applied mark grid and what it does it automatically draws all the lines where frame positions are so it identifies the frame positions draws a line and then marks it with the frame number and same goes for the side girders and here the center line is also marked uh, so that is so that's it for uh, applying markings um, and what you see now on this tank top is that it's one big plate um, but this plate doesn't fit in an industrial plate um, so it cannot really be cut uh, so what we need to do is we have to split this big plate up into smaller plates so we can simply draw a line from here to there uh, oh, enter uh, maybe a bit maybe a bit longer and copy it to here oh, to there and draw a final line from here to here okay so if we now use this command ship split part and we can select the part and the curves and now it will be split into six parts so we can remove those lines um, 
So those plates will fit in a industrial plate. Those bigger ones, of course not. Um, then another thing, if you go to the assembly and then to frame uh, 57 or uh, doesn't matter too much actually. Let's pick this frame. Then you see on the port side and on the starboard side, you see uh, stiffeners to the hull and they are supported by brackets. Um, on the left side, they are drawn as stiffeners and on the right side, they are drawn as plate parts. So the stiffeners on the right side will be cut by the cutting machine. Well, those stiffeners needs to be actually bent. And this stiffener is a T-profile, so that's fine if you need to bend it. Uh, but this profile is a flat bar, so I can show you. Uh, but this is a flat bar, but then bent. But we have exactly the same on this side, but this is being cut. So maybe it's easier to go for the cutted part instead of the bended part, at least for the flat bar. Um, so there's a difference. This left side will be saved as um, will be saved as a stiffener in the database, and this will be saved in the database as a part. So that's something to consider. Um, yeah, and what you can see, so for example, this um, T-profile, it has a unique identification of PHF 5050C and it needs to be bent. So what we can do, we can make a stiffener plot for it and that makes a, um, a drawing which can be used for the workshop. I already made all the stiffener plots. Well, if I go to my project, I go to the stiffer plots and I select uh, 50, oh, 55C. Oh, this is 45, 55C. And then I open it. And then you see this drawing. Uh, so you have four different viewports. Uh, you have here some information about the type of profile and about the length, uh, as you see, there's no extra length added, maybe it should. Um, and here you see the type of detail that is used on the right side, and it has the it has an angled cut of 3 degrees. And on the left side is also an angled cut of 12 degrees. So this can be used for um, yeah, producing this banded stiffener. And then finally, um, if you have, uh, let's go to frame 48 again. Uh, you can add uh, weld compensation and beveling. Um, so imagine that this part, this plate part is made out of aluminum instead of steel. Then the part might uh, deform when you weld it. So what you can do, you can add weld compensation to this part. And then you select the site where, you, where it will be weld. Uh, and then the part will slightly deform so that if you weld it, that it will deform back to the actual shape that you will, would like to have. Uh, and in a similar way, you can add baffle information. And then that information is also saved in the database. Um, let's see. What can we also do? Yeah, those are the the main um, the main uh, subjects of uh, adding uh, production information to parts. Um, all the information will be saved in the database and can be found back in the management reports. Um, 
Thank you for watching this uh, video and the next video will be on nesting the plates and generating cutting code. So I hope to see you in the next video. In this video I will explain how we can convert our 3D plate parts uh, into cutting code. So what we first do is we uh, open a new drawing which is just an empty drawing. So in my project folder, I have a folder called nesting and I open this eight millimeter steel demo, which is in fact just an uh, empty drawing. So the first thing I do is I create uh, plates. So industrial plates. I give them an identification, a thickness of eight millimeters in this case. Uh, those plates have a length of 12 meters by three meters uh, and they are made out of steel. And I say I want 16 plates and I click OK. Now all the plates are inserted into the, into the drawing. And those are the plates are in which the, the plate parts are going to be nested. So now I do import parts and I will look for uh, eight millimeter uh, steel parts all uh, in my project folder. So I say generate results. And then we have an overview of all the parts in this project made out of steel with a thickness of eight millimeters. So you can also um, filter for section. So you can say only from one A or one C or uh, we don't do that now. We just do all of them. Go back to the results. Um, in this case, I select all the parts, so all the way from frame 44 until uh, 64. Click insert parts. And here I have the parts. So this is obviously the tank top. I'm going to make this a bit nicer. So I put the tank top here and I move those plates to here. So this nesting is an automatic process. You can also do it uh, manually, um, but it's recommended to do it automatic. Um, so you first do prepare and then you simply select everything. And then OK. So the software is now drawing contours around the plate parts uh, and also in the holes in the parts. So um, those contours are used for the nesting. And those contours will ensure that all the plate parts will keep uh, a certain amount of distance from each other. So it might be desired to keep a space of one or two centimeters between each part. So that is what it's doing now. And it's finished. So if we zoom in, then you see here a red contour around this web frame. And I've uh, set it to a very course uh, contour uh, you can make this contour uh, much more fitted to that part uh, but that slows uh, slows the software down so for this demo I made a very coarse uh, contour around the parts and here with a green line the inner contour is marked okay so now we can start the actual nesting. So here you have functionalities to do it manually or semi-automatic, but we go for uh, automatic.
automatic. And we do all the plates and we select all the objects except for those bigger ones since they will not fit. And then we press enter. So what this does now, it tries to fit the biggest or yeah, the biggest possible part into the smallest amount of space. So what you see is now first all the big parts are placed onto the plates. And when that's done, then all uh, the smaller construction elements like the brackets um, will be tried to fill, uh, to fill the plates. So a lot of brackets will probably go into inner contours and you will see that in a bit. Okay, so now it's done. Uh, here you can see the end result. I click stop nesting here first. You see here um, the end result. So if we look at, uh, for example, this plate, then you see the two big floors are nested and all the brackets and here also a stiffener or yeah, it's, it's, it's a, in fact, a strip, plate strip. Um, are fitted into the contours. And here you see one of the deck beams, for example, with the marking lines on it. So this is from frame 44, and then you see, okay, this stiffener should be here. So that's marked. Um, so this is a final, uh, yeah, this can be a deliverable. So you can send this to uh, a cutting company. Um, but what you can also do is make the cutting code yourself. Um, we have here the tools to do so. It's a, yeah, a process that you have to follow. Um, and uh, if you've done that, then you get the actual cutting code. And I can show you how that looks. So I did exactly the same for, um, uh, for this file. And um, what you see here is, for example, those blue lines. They're maybe a bit hard to see. They are highlighted now. Uh, those blue lines uh, indicate the, the path that the cutting head uh, will follow. And after you've done that, then you can place also the inleads of the, the cutting head. That can also be done uh, fully automatically. Um, and after that, you generate the NC code. So for this, um, uh, for this drawing I did, and I can show you how it looks. So if you have done all those steps, then you get those files. Uh, and, um, so here you see, this is our, the actual cutting files. So those are deliverables as well. So you can send those files the cutting machine and then it will be cut and also be marked. Um, so we can, uh, we did generate the NC code uh, and we can also simulate it. So I pick plate 45 as an example. And now the, the plate is here displayed. 10 times as big as uh, it should be. And then we press play. And now you see the path of uh, the cutting head. And you also see with red, those are the inleads of the cutting head. So that's where the cutting head starts going down and starts cutting. And you see the blue line and that is the, the path that the cutting heads traveling. So notice that uh, the marking of plates is uh, not incorporated in this simulation, but uh, the code for applying the marking is generated.
So that's a way to check everything is right. Um, and that's the final delivery. So um, we've made the project, um, we set it up, we made a 3D construction model for it. We used uh, intelligent copy functions. We used Tom, uh, we applied production data to it. Uh, and finally, we made uh, cutting code from it. So this cutting code can actually be sent to a cutting machine today, uh, and then it will be cut. Um, so uh, in the next video, we'll, we'll, we will look at management reports and, um, and purchase lists. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. In this video, I will uh, show you how you can view the management reports and the purchase lists and also how the nesting of stiffeners is done. So in the Mastership ribbon, we can go to the organizer. And in the organizer, you can open our project. And here we have a few predefined uh, reports about all our parts and uh, stiffeners and it's also possible to make your own custom reports so those are just a few predefined reports uh, so if I open them and you see here all the parts in the project listed by ID uh, we say if the same for stiffeners or this, those are staffs actually so here same list for stiffeners uh, but also for example the center of gravity calculation of all the parts and the stiffeners. Um, so you can export this information to, um, for example, Excel or maybe another software that you use. Uh, so you can simply paste it. And from here on, you can uh, use this information in maybe another software, maybe an uh, ERP system um, or customize it to your own um, to your own wishes um, so I did that um, I made four tabs with my template on it uh, so here I listed all the parts uh, by ID I applied a filter to it so I can uh, so I can sort for, uh, for example, largest to smallest or for drawing name. Um, what you see is here uh, all the parts in the project. Uh, you see the production unit that they have, uh, the area, etc. You also see here the, those two, two columns, the treatment columns. In this case, they are empty. Um, but uh, when you assign, uh, so when you create a part and you assign uh, a treatment to it. So for example, maybe it needs to be painted, maybe it needs to be bent or uh, flanged. When you add that, then it will show up in those management reports. So that can be quite helpful. Uh, then you have uh, something similar for uh, the stiffener reports. So here you see all the stiffeners. And um, here you can also see uh, whether they should be bent or not. And you see the production unit. So not all of them have a production unit. So that then I have just not assigned it to it. Um, so yeah, those are all the stiffeners. And from all the stiffeners, uh, we can generate a purchase list. So here you see the purchase list with the profiles that we should buy and the amount of stiffeners that we should buy. So for uh, the flat bar, uh, this flat bar, we should buy eight. And then we can cut all the stiffeners out of that, uh, out of those profiles. So you see here an industrial length. Uh, those are by default set, but you can add your own industrial length as well. Uh, so you see those two have a relatively uh, low or normal uh, average waste percentage. That's due to the fact that in this uh, project, a lot of small stiffeners are used and therefore um, the, the staff can be used efficiently uh, and those have a higher waste percentage. That's because this is a relatively small project and we have, have had a few uh, big stiffeners, which apparently
apparently awkwardly fit into a industrial length. So therefore this waste percentage is a bit high. Um, so, so we have this, this, this purchase list and we can also view a saw list of the stiffeners. So here you see the, the staffs that we need to purchase. And out of this staff, we can make three stiffeners. So here the one is appended, here two is appended and here three is appended. Meaning we can get three stiffeners out of this staff. So here you see the unique identification number and the length that it should be cut and also the left and right end detail code. So what you can do, you can um, send this report to, um, to the workshop floor and then uh, those profiles can be cut uh, according to the length. And then um, when they are cut, then you can uh, apply uh, with, for example, a marker, then you can write uh, the unique uh, identification number on it so that uh, that information can be used later on in the building process. Um, so as I said, you can um, make your own reports. Those are just a few standard reports that I used as an example. Uh, but if you have uh, made your own uh, reports, then you could have maybe made here uh, another column with the production unit. And then that's also a bit of logistic information. And uh, maybe you could have made another column with uh, the treatment. Um, so everything, all the, the, the information which is saved in the database about the stiffeners and the parts can be extracted and then translated into reports. So it's all up to the user how to give those reports shape. Um, let me see. I think, yeah, that was, um, for now, that was it on uh, generating reports. Um, in the next video, I will go back to my PowerPoint and I will um, tell you which functions we did not see during this demo. Um, and then I will conclude. So uh, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Congratulations, you have made it until the final video of this software demo. In the previous videos, we have seen a lot of the functionalities that Mastership has to offer. Uh, although I'm, I'm pretty sure you haven't seen anything, everything. So um, in this video, I will tell you which we, what we haven't seen. Uh, I will also tell you uh, about the software extensions that we have. And finally, I will tell you what is on our roadmap for the coming years. So what we haven't seen is, uh, for example, piping. So for piping, we have a functionality called hole in plate uh, or short hip. And with hip, you can import a CSV file. And in this CSV file uh, is then um, information about the position and the diameter of pipes that intersect uh, frames. And then if you import this file, then all the holes uh, that are specified in that file are automatically generated uh, into the plates. But we also haven't seen uh, how to adapt to design changes. So for that, uh, I can mention that um, in Mastership, it's possible to make your uh, complete 3D model parametric. And by parametric, I mean that you can assign variables to parts. So for example, a bracket, if you have a bracket, you know where to put it, but you don't know yet how big it should be. You can say, okay, the length should be X and the width should be Y. And then later on in the design phase, you can update those values. So then you can have the bracket from this small to for example, this big or the other way around or make it longer or wider. And you can do that for the complete 3D model. And that's in fact exactly the same technology as we have already seen uh, in the section of rapid modeling. So in that section, we copied one frame uh, to other frame positions. And those other frame positions had a different shape than the first frame. 
So it really adapts to yeah, a change in the shape. So that's in fact exactly the same technology. We also haven't seen uh, arrangement drawings. An arrangement drawing is a, a slice through the model and then a drawing is automatically generated from it. And with that, you can use it to uh, communicate or see whether uh, maybe, for example, an external part will fit into it. And we also haven't seen how to import uh, external parts. So maybe an engine or a pump or the piping. Uh, you can also import that into your mastership model. Finally, we haven't seen anything about plate information. Uh, so due to during to during the nest <laughs> during the nesting, um, we haven't seen any uh, information about the nesting itself. So how efficient did we do it? Well, in in our demo, we didn't do it quite efficient since we had a lot of big parts and uh, little smaller parts. Uh, but we haven't seen that information um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that we haven't seen a lot of the other functionalities. Um, so if you are wondering whether a functionality is possible or not, then just feel free to ask us your questions. Okay, then finally, we have two software extensions, so the Workshop Assistant and the Model Exchanger. The Workshop Assistant uh, yeah, is displayed here. Uh, it's in fact a big screen and it can be in the middle of your workshop or at your shop floor and it can be used to quickly look up uh, certain parts. So here at the top you see uh, that there is searched for, I, for a uh, unique identification number and then it is found here and it's highlighted in blue so it's a part of the bulk hat. And here on the top right corner, you see some information about it, like uh, the ID, the material, the thickness, and the production unit. Um, so this can be really helpful to, uh, yeah, for example, the workshop, and also eliminates for a major part the need to have uh, conventional construction drawings. And it can either be used with uh, Navisworks Manage or Navisworks Freedom. And within uh, that software, you can use the, the common Navisworks functionalities like uh, making a view of a small section or uh, adding comments, or you can do collision checks. And uh, collision checks is quite helpful. So here you see a, a stringer and a stiffener. And the stiffener collides with the, with the stringer. Uh, so if you see that, then you know, okay, uh, I need to adjust my 3D model. There are a lot of other functionalities in Navisworks, uh, which I'm not going to explain now, but maybe in a later video. Uh, then we also have the Mastership Model Exchanger, which enables you to share your model with other parties. So with this, you can make an export of your assembly to any other file format. You can also do it with the basic AutoCAD functionality, but then all the properties of your solids will be lost. So then you only get an export of solids. If you do it with the Mastership Model Exchanger, then you will have all the properties attached to the solid. So then if you click a solid then, like here, then you see all the properties of this Mastership part. So then you see when it's created, by who it's created, um, the thickness, etc. And then for the coming years, uh, we are going to put more effort into uh, our user interface and our user experience. Um, after that, we are going to put effort into knowledge-based engineering and compartments. And with knowledge-based knowledge engineering, uh, we mean that we want to incorporate rules into our software. So those can be classification rules, but also uh, company or uh, working method uh, rules. So for a small part, this is already incorporated into our software. So if you, for example, make a stiffener uh, with a length of uh, nine meter, then our software will say, hey, watch out, uh, you're going to make a stiffener which is longer than a industrial length. Are you sure do you, that you want to do this? And also if you're going to, for example, do a nesting, of steel plates into an aluminum plate, 
then our software will say, hey, watch out, you are doing this. So that's already incorporated for a small part when we would like to expand on that. Uh, and also compartments. Um, and that's uh, also a bit of a management tool. So uh, then with compartments, we can draw uh, sort of boxes around certain sections of the ship. And then you can design uh, based on those compartments. Um, so that was it really. Uh, thank you for watching this, this uh, complete demo. Uh, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask, of course. And I hope to see you the next time in our office.